Tonight, the urgent manhunt in Florida for the suspect in a deadly mall shooting. Police now appealing to the public for their help. Just moments ago, officials releasing a photo of the man they are looking for, now wanted for murder. After the scene of chaos just ahead of Christmas, shoppers running for cover, hiding in stores as officers race to the scene. One person killed, another wounded. What we're learning tonight. A family's nightmare, a six-year-old traveling alone to be with his grandmother for the holiday, put on the wrong Spirit Airlines plane, arriving in the wrong city. The tense moments for his family and what the airline is now saying. This in the middle of a record-breaking holiday travel season, with millions hitting the roads and taking to the skies. We're watching a powerful cross-country storm making its way across the Midwest and the South, millions on alert for potential flooding, and the blizzard warning in the Northern Plains. Christmas celebrations canceled in the traditional birthplace of Jesus, where the fighting in Gaza hangs over what is usually a time of joy, as relentless combat in the Israel-Hamas war takes a toll on civilians and both sides in the fighting, the IDF releasing their grim death toll. And Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu under pressure inside Israel, vowing to stay the course in the conflict. Rick Clement from Bethlehem. And tonight, renewed fears that the Israeli-Hamas conflict will spread as tensions escalate in the Red Sea and the new U.S. intel showing Iran's involvement in the attacks on commercial vessels. Here at home, former President Donald Trump takes his case for immunity to an appeals court. How this could play out with just weeks to go until the Iowa caucuses. The new warning from the FDA, fake Ozempic is likely still in the U.S. supply chain. What consumers need to know. The daring rescue in Oklahoma, a deputy pulls a woman from a burning car in just the nick of time. The miracle births in Alabama, the proud parents and their twins, who are one in a million. And tracking Santa on his incredible journey across the world, the military command keeping its eyes on St. Nick around the clock. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight. Good evening, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us on this Sunday. I'm Rachel Scott, in for Lindsay Davis. We begin tonight with breaking news. An urgent manhunt is underway for a gunman after a deadly shooting at a Florida mall packed with holiday shoppers. Police tonight releasing this image of the suspect, 39-year-old Albert J. Shell Jr., accused of killing one person and wounding another during one of the busiest holiday shopping days. This person inside the mall capturing the moment's gunshots rang out, terrified shoppers running for cover. The suspect fleeing the mall on foot. Police now saying the shooting was targeted. And authorities are asking for the public's help. ABC's Zareen Shah leads us off tonight. Tonight, the urgent manhunt for the Florida shooter opening fire in a crowd of holiday shoppers just hours before Christmas Eve. Ocala police searching for this suspect, Albert Shell Jr., wanted for murder and attempted murder after what they say was a targeted shooting at the Paddock Mall. Soraya Williams says she was with her mother at Bath and Body Works when she filmed this video seconds after hearing gunshots. There's no way that just happened. Officials say 911 calls began after 3 on Saturday afternoon for multiple shots fired. Video showing shoppers running and barricading in stores. Police swarming the shopping center, recovering a firearm, but the suspect escaping before police arrived. We heard two shots and then everybody just rushed into our store and just like ran straight out through the back. Police say the shooting killed 40-year-old David Nathaniel Barrett, another woman surviving after a bullet pierced her leg. Jennifer Murty was wrapping presents at the mall when she heard shots. And I saw the shooter with the gun in his hand. He just fell to the ground. Police now asking for help from witnesses and threatening felony arrest to a person who they allegedly discovered on surveillance taking the suspect's red hat. There was a lot of people here shopping at the mall, which means there's a lot of witnesses that could potentially help us uh, bring this case to a successful resolution. And there is a $5,000 reward for anyone who can lead police to an arrest. As for the mall, it will be closed until after Christmas. Rachel. Zareen Shaw on that urgent manhunt tonight. Zareen, thank you. Next tonight, Spirit Airlines is apologizing after mistakenly putting an unaccompanied six-year-old on the wrong flight. It comes during the record-breaking holiday travel rush. Airports across the nation crammed with passengers hoping to arrive in time for Christmas. But dense fog is being blamed for the cancellation and delay of dozens of flights at Chicago's Midway Airport. Here's ABC's Rena Roy. Tonight, Spirit Airlines conducting an internal investigation after an unaccompanied minor was sent to the wrong city. The child was traveling from Philadelphia to Fort Myers, but instead ended up in Orlando after being put on a different flight. 
The airline saying as soon as we discovered the error, we took immediate steps to communicate with the family and reconnect them. It comes as we see a record-breaking holiday travel rush. AAA calling it the busiest air travel season ever, with 7.5 million passengers expected to fly. On Friday alone, the TSA is screening more than 2.7 million people. This weekend at Chicago's Midway Airport, nearly 40% of flights delayed due to intense fog. I did not think that I would be sitting in this airport for 14 hours. Southwest also canceling about four dozen flights. I'm missing Christmas. The next direct flight they could get me isn't until Wednesday. Passengers waiting hours for their bags, some choosing to leave the airport without them. Christina Bowes finally getting her suitcase a day late. I literally jumped up and down. And if you're looking to make any last minute plans, tomorrow is expected to be the least busy day for both flying and driving. Rachel? A good day to travel. Rena Roy from Newark Airport tonight. Thank you. A white Christmas may not be the reality for most Americans, but a slow moving storm could bring rain and flooding across the South and some parts of the Midwest. ABC meteorologist Samara Theodore is tracking it all for us. Hey, Samara. Good evening, Rachel. One of the few places in for a white Christmas, the Plains. Right now, we're looking at winter alerts that are expansive. Blizzard warnings have taken over central South Dakota and Nebraska, and wind gusts of 55 miles per hour could lead to drifting snow and precarious driving situations. As far as totals go, we can see 20 inches, which is significant for the Plains. This storm then moves east. Three to five inches of rain along the Gulf Coast could lead to flooding, and Tuesday travel may be impacted on the ride home by rain along the I-95 corridor. All the while, temperatures will range above normal for many cities. Cleveland set to hit near 60 degrees on Christmas Day with 40s and 50s along the East Coast. Rachel. Samara, thank you. Overseas now where the impact of the Israel Hamas war is on full display in Bethlehem. Christmas celebrations were canceled in the traditional birthplace of Jesus. No festive lights, no big crowds of tourists in the town square. It comes as we learn of the heavy death toll on both sides of the conflict. This weekend, one of the bloodiest of the war so far. ABC's Britt Clenet has more from Bethlehem tonight. Tonight, a subdued Christmas in the biblical birthplace of Jesus. The normally bustling Bethlehem in the West Bank, a ghost town this holiday. Christmas celebrations here called off due to the war. Residents here prepared for a somber holiday. It's a different Christmas and everyone is sad and everyone is uh, focusing on what is happening uh, in Gaza. Bethlehem looks different, but the prayers go on. Normally there'd be traditional Christmas decorations here this year, a powerful statement symbolizing Jesus born in the rubble. A similar nativity seen inside this Lutheran church. Reverend Muntha Isaac telling me it is a tribute to the children of Gaza. The world right now celebrates Christmas in festive ways. And while the world is lighting Christmas trees, our, chai, our children are under rubble. Meanwhile, in Rafa, southern Gaza, Hazem Saba describing to me via phone call what Christmas feels like as a Christian in Gaza right now. We don't feel that there is Christmas here. Um, we don't feel about uh, even um, about the date. Uh, we don't know uh, if, if we are uh, today is, uh, is Christmas or it's, uh, uh, it's Friday or Wednesday. Or, uh, we, do, we don't feel anything. What's your message to the world this Christmas day? <laughs> pray for us. Just pray for us. Uh, to still alive, at least. Um, some days we feel we feel that we uh, we are uh, uh, um, not far away from from death. The holiday comes as relentless urban combat in Gaza takes a heavy toll on both sides of the conflict. The IDF today acknowledging at least 15 Israeli soldiers were killed over the weekend, some of its heaviest losses since the war began. 154 Israeli soldiers now killed. That mounting death toll increasing the pressure on Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to negotiate with Hamas. Thousands taking to the streets of Tel Aviv on Saturday to protest his government. Today, the Prime Minister defending Israel's military operation. The war exacts a very heavy price from us, but we have no choice but to continue fighting, he said, adding, we are continuing with all force until the end. Back in the U.S., President Biden saying he and Netanyahu spoke about Israel's military operation this weekend, but did not broach the subject of a potential ceasefire. I had a long talk with Netanyahu today, and it's a private conversation. I did not ask for ceasefire.
Rachel, here in Bethlehem, that Gaza death toll, now at more than 20,400, very much front of mind as aid groups continue to sound the alarm, one UN agency warning of a man-made famine and stain on our common humanity. Rachel. All right, Britt, thank you. Turning now to the escalating tensions in the Red Sea after a U.S. warship shot down four drones, that same vessel also responding to distress calls on Saturday. ABC's Jay O'Brien joins us now from the White House. All right, so Jay, what are you learning about these attacks and what is the White House saying tonight? Yeah, Rachel, tonight, U.S. Central Command saying the USS Laboon, a warship that's been patrolling the Red Sea, shot down those four drones that were launched from Iranian-backed Houthi militant-controlled areas in Yemen. That same U.S. vessel also responding to attacks on at least two commercial tankers in the Red Sea on Saturday. One tanker reporting a near miss. The other was struck by a kamikaze drone with no injuries reported. According to the Pentagon, there have been at least 15 attacks on commercial vessels in the in the Red Sea since mid-October amid escalating tensions in that region there. And U.S. military officials tonight saying that this chemical tanker, a chemical tanker, was struck in a separate incident in the Indian Ocean this weekend with another kamikaze drone that officials say was launched from inside Iran. The White House in recent days has been declassifying intelligence that it says shows the level to which Iran has been supporting those Houthi-backed militants who have been conducting those attacks in the Red Sea, including sending weapons and providing intelligence, Rachel, on which vessels to target, Rachel. Jay O'Brien from the White House tonight. Jay, thank you. We turn now to Donald Trump's new demand overnight to drop the federal investigation into his efforts to overturn the 2020 election. The former president and his lawyers insisting presidential immunity protects him from prosecution, but that's been up for debate in the courts. ABC's Ike Jachi has more on what the former president is saying tonight. Tonight, Donald Trump doubling down on his lawyers' arguments that he should be immune from prosecution in his federal election interference case. The former president posting on social media, I was doing my duty as president. I did nothing wrong. In a 71-page filing overnight, Trump's attorneys demanding immunity, writing under our system of separated powers, the judicial branch cannot sit in judgment over a president's official acts. Trump's lawyers contend no current or former president should be prosecuted for official acts unless he is first impeached and convicted by the Senate. Congress acquitted Trump in his two impeachments. He has denied any wrongdoing. Trump's lawyers also warning that if the case is taken to trial, it will launch cycles of recrimination and politically motivated prosecution that will plague our nation for many decades to come. They're searching for every opportunity to delay, to make broad sweeping claims to prevent the, these trials. Special counsel Jack Smith alleges Trump acted beyond his official duties as he used deceit towards state officials to subvert the legitimate election results. The U.S. Supreme Court on Friday rejecting Smith's request to fast track this very dispute over Trump's immunity. The sweeping claims of absolute immunity, I think, will ultimately, even with this Supreme Court, not hold, but it's going to take a while to get there. That's the problem. District Judge Tanya Chutkin, who is overseeing the case, rejecting Trump's immunity argument earlier this month, writing, whatever immunities a sitting president may enjoy, the United States has only one chief executive at a time. Rachel, the appellate court has signaled that it plans to move quickly with oral arguments beginning on January 9th. Still, its decision will almost certainly be challenged in the Supreme Court, potentially delaying the trial's March 4th start date. Rachel. And of course, all of this playing out against the backdrop of the Republican primary. All right, Ike, thank you. Turning now to a $30 million lawsuit filed against the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Family members say a mother of two called 911 during a domestic dispute, but then she was shot and killed by a deputy who responded to that call. The shooting is now being investigated by the district attorney's office. Here's ABC's Jacqueline Lee. Tonight, Christmas Eve is different for the Finlayson family after they say an L.A. Sheriff's deputy shot and killed their daughter. It's horrific to think of the trauma that Sasha has had to endure witnessing her mother being shot. The family of 27-year-old Niani Finlayson speaking out, filing a claim ahead of a $30 million lawsuit going after the department for civil rights violations, battery, assault, and state civil rights claims. It all stems from an incident earlier this month when officers responded to a domestic violence call. When they arrived, deputies alleged the mother answered the door holding a large knife and said she was going to stab a man for pushing her daughter. 
Deputies then entered the apartment, alleging Finlayson grabbed the man while holding the knife in an apparent attempt to stab him. That's when a deputy opened fire. The family disagrees, saying Finlayson's nine-year-old daughter handed her the knife while the mother was sitting on the ground, alleging she was shot in the back from outside. Rachel, the L.A. County Sheriff's Department says it has not received the family's claim, but in an effort of transparency, will be releasing the body camera footage next week, which they say is earlier than the required time frame. Rachel. Jacqueline Lee on this developing story. Jacqueline, thank you. Next tonight, Pope Francis delivering his traditional Christmas Eve mass in Vatican City. The 86-year-old pontiff urging Christians to remember those suffering from war, especially in Israel and Ukraine. He also encouraged thousands who gathered in St. Peter's Square not to confuse celebration with consumerism. There's still much more ahead tonight on World News this Christmas Eve. The urgent warning from the FDA about the fake weight loss medication that may still be on the market and the hero that arrived in just the nick of time, saving a woman from a burning car. Next tonight, the FDA is sounding the alarm after seizing thousands of units of fake Ozempic from the U.S. drug supply. Officials are warning consumers as well as pharmacies and healthcare providers to be on alert because some of that counterfeit products may still be available for purchase. We have more information on the ABC News website. Chick-fil-A may have to open some of its stores on Sundays. New York lawmakers are pushing a bill that would require all restaurants that operate in the state highway system to be open seven days a week, Chick-fil-A included. The chain has long been closed on Sundays so employees can enjoy family time and worship if they choose. When we come back, the Miracle Babies who are one in a million and just in time for Christmas. To the index now, a one in a million pregnancy is giving an Alabama family a special reason to celebrate this holiday. Kelsey Hatcher has a double uterus. She became pregnant with a baby in each uterus at the same time, something that is very rare. Hatcher and her husband welcomed two healthy baby girls, one on December 19th, the other on the 20th, both arriving just in time for the holidays. An Oklahoma deputy is being praised for his bravery tonight. Deputy Matthew Yerby jumped into action when he saw a burning car on the side of the road. Body cam video shows him racing to the scene, using his baton to break open the car window. He then pulled the woman who was inside to safety. Officials say if he had hesitated for just a second or two, she would not have survived. When we come back, the eyes and the skies on Santa. NORAD's most important holiday mission that spreads the good cheer. And finally tonight, tracking Santa, the holiday tradition that happened by accident. Tonight, one man, full of Christmas magic, has a long, important journey in front of him, with some dedicated reindeer leading the way. No different from anyone else in the sky, the North American Aerospace Defense Command, also known as NORAD, is tracking his flight pattern. He knows we're there, and uh, he's quite happy that we're, we're uh, escorting him as he makes his way around North America. Through mountains, over the Colosseum, past the Statue of Liberty. NORAD has been following Santa's journey around the world for 68 years. It starts with our North Warning System radars. As soon as Santa departs the North Pole, those radars pick him up. It all started in 1955 with a misprinted phone number in a department store ad. That misprinted phone number connected to a phone at the Con Ed Operations Center. One child's call spurring a global phenomenon. Santa's technology has since advanced. So many families from around the world now go online to follow Santa's flight path in real time on their website. Last year, the Santa Cam had nearly 16 million viewers. Kids calling and emailing, over a thousand volunteers working the phones, answering calls to the Santa hotline. But not all reindeer are part of Santa's special Christmas mission. Some are just dedicated farm workers. This might not be uh, Rudolph the Red Nose, but um, here is uh, Rebecca the White. In Norway and Sweden, the indigenous Sami people herd reindeer. We have been doing um, in our family for many, many generations. And tonight, debunking one very common myth. Reindeer don't eat carrots, no. <laughs> Maybe opt for leaving another treat for Santa and his reindeer this year. And we hope Santa has something nice for you under the tree. Thank you for watching. I'm Rachel Scott. Happy holidays. Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.